Hello and welcome back to the Bankers Masterclass series in a partnership with Kasha Bank, entitled Innovation to Fuel Recovery. I'm Joy McKnight, Managing Editor of The Banker, and I'm joined by Para Nabot, Kasha Bank's Chief Information Officer. In the final chapter of this four-part series, we'll look at how banks can best leverage technology in responding to the COVID pandemic. Para, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks to you, Joy. So let's start at the top, really. So how has Kasha Bank deployed technology in its response to the COVID-19 pandemic? I remember those days like if it was yesterday, especially Friday, March 13, when the COVID outbreak started to become more significant, and the state of emergency was declared. In the last decade, Kasha Bank has made significant investments in providing mobility and work from home tools to their employees. But we never had 100% of our headquarters working from home at the same time. In order to check and prepare for what was coming as a test, we sent 50% of our headquarters to work from home. That was a really good decision. Yes, they work reasonably well. But that test helped us to identify some performance gaps that were OK for 50% of our employees, but very painful if we increased to 100%. We knew that the world was going to stop turning that weekend, so we had to react quickly. You simple cannot create a complete system from scratch able to withstand all your employees working from home in a single weekend. That's impossible. We had the foundations of the system ready. That's true. So we only had to make some upgrades and fine tune. All the technical teams work hard all that weekend and indeed the following weeks. And finally, Monday turned out uh, nicely. We had most of our employees working from home successfully from the first day. And we only had to improve some details over the following days. So our employees could put all their effort into what was important at that time, staying safe and helping our customers with their needs. OK, well, let's go on a little bit about what advances were made in the following weeks after this wholesale shift to working from home. Mm -hmm. Following the first shock, we could maintain our bank up and running. This is what we call the operative phase. This keeps things running for some days, but we had to quickly evolve to the productive phase. That means not only be able to work, but work in the best conditions and assure that all the hours dedicated by our employees were 100% productive. Hence, collaborative tools appear such as those that allow us international sharing and editing documents, meeting and conference software, among others. We are a Mediterranean country. We like to meet, we like to talk, we like to discuss, we like to argue, we like to explore. In fact, we like to work in teams. And we needed tools to perform those activities during the lockdown. We, at that time, were in a proof of concept of Microsoft Teams. We decided to move from a test of only 400 employees and deploy it to almost 40,000. Once again, we, have, we were able to move so fast because we had already invested beforehand. This is the most important takeaway for me. Digitalization and investing in IT capacities helps you to be more resilient when these unexpected shocks arise. But this is not the end. Now, some months, almost one year later, we are moving from the operative phase and the productive phase to the third phase, the creative phase. The situation of social distancing is going to last for a while, so we need to find the right way to achieve the same results and the same activities that we were used to, but under these circumstances. We need to brainstorm, design thinking sessions, plenary sessions with all our employees, team building activities, etc. These kinds of activities had always been performed physically. Now we must find a way to perform them online. Okay, so what role did the banks sort of, your big technology partners play 
um, and actually rolling out and being more digital for your teams? Absolutely crucial. They have been the pillars of our success. Even if you have good skills, you cannot face an episode as important as this one on your own. You always design and prepare your systems for what you expect, and even for some events with a remote possibility of happening. But when this kind of black swan appears, it's better to rely on partners. Once again, CaixaBank has always believed in working with top class partners in the world. They have the economy for scale and the global power that is more costly for banks to invest alone. Here, the important word is cloud, cloud computing. Cloud gives you the possibility to use it when you need it, pay it when you use it, uh, and so on. So you don't need to invest millions in capacity that you are only going to use at certain moments of the year, or maybe in a decade. Or think about this pandemic. Most companies cannot afford to have all this computing power just in case a black swan appears. Here is when partners such as IBM, Microsoft, Oracle, Fujitsu, Google, Telefonica, and many others appear, the big ones. I really understand it's a matter of partnership and we really feel the work as one team. And it's not only about our partners, it's also about our uh, internal employees. So you can have a very skilled uh, group of, of employees and you should, but in, in this lockdown scenario, what is really, really important is commitment. All the IT department was totally, commit, totally committed to maintain the bank up and running. And the rest of the employees, all CaixaBank employees were totally committed to fulfill all our customers' needs. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your insights, Para. And many thanks to our audience for joining us for this masterclass series in partnership with CaixaBank.